Applying for an MBA requires many things. GMAT Math is one of them. And if math is giving you a headache, here's the magic pill. I assume some of you have experienced the frustration of being stuck, knowing what to do with a problem, but there's simply not enough time. Today, you'll be seeing a new revolutionary approach to GMAT math. You'll see your scores going up from 30-something to 45 and 40-something to 49 in no time. In this video, the two questions will be solved using the variable approach. And you'll see for yourself the easiest, fastest, and most accurate way to solve GMAT math DS questions. I'm sure once you see how it's done, you'll be amazed by the efficiency of the variable approach. You'll have 10 minutes to spare before the test ends. So, here's question number one. Okay guys, imagine you're taking the actual test. This question is going to give you a really hard time. Maybe your eyes will dim, or your hands might get all sweaty. And some of you may feel your heartbeat accelerating. In fact, some might even just give up and go home, especially if you see this on a computer screen. But with variable approach, this will be an easy walk in the park. This type of question is what we call 2x2, two two, which occurs frequently on GMAT math. In other words, the information given in the question prompt becomes a 2x2 two two table that easily summarizes a lot of information. The 2x2 two two above has one variable x, so one equation is needed. This is because equal number of variables and equations ensures a solution in the DS section. So the above question will likely have D as the answer, because each statement alone is sufficient. That is, a 2x2 two by, two by default has four variables, but in this question, three variables are already defined as 100, 60, and 55%, because the question is asking about percentages. That is why we only have one variable and require one equation to solve this problem. But if you look at condition 1, they give us the equation we need in the form of 20%. So condition 1 is sufficient alone. Condition 2 also gives us 43%, which means it is also sufficient alone. As you've seen, if there are a total of four percentages in a condition, counting those given in the question prompt, and the question is asking about percentages, then that condition is sufficient. Therefore, the best answer is D. So what do you think? Compared to how you used to solve these problems, don't you think this approach is something completely new and exactly what you needed? Let's take another look at how useful variable approach is. Looking at the second question with the drawing on the screen, with this question also you will feel yourself wishing to break the computer and just give up. Soon after, you'll be thinking about your plans after the exam. But none of this will happen if you know how to use the variable approach. According to the variable approach, saying that four sides are equal is the same as saying that we have a rhombus. And since rhombus has two variables, we need two equations to solve this problem. In the DS section, equal number of variables and equations ensures a solution. C is likely our answer because both statements taken together are sufficient to answer the question, but neither statement alone is sufficient. In other words, Condition 1 gives us an equation, and Condition 2 gives us another equation for a total of two equations that will allow us to solve for the two variables. We need both conditions 1 and 2 to solve for the answer. Therefore, the best answer is C. So what do you think? Isn't this easy? But can't figure out how we've made it so easy. With 15 years of experience, we have developed a unique and magical approach that will allow you to solve any GMAT math problem with ease, speed, and accuracy. Most of our students hit at least 45 points using the variable approach for solving GMAT math DS problems. Once again, at least 45 points. A majority of them even got 49 points or higher. And this can be you. Come and join us. We're always here at www.mathrevolution.com.